Hey tubers, a little light on the subject. So the <laughs> this is this is like a BG eighty six. What is this thing? Yeah, I can't even tell. It's like a BG eighty six handheld blower, and this is how I got it. You now, it's quite a bit of crud on here. So it's, it's in because he. He wants the new primer bolt put in there. You can see that it's ripped. But I'm looking right over here. And I don't know how close I can get. It needs a... The fuel line is ripped right on top. Right there too. But here's something that I want to show you. Get that focus going. Um, it looks like it's been rode hard and put away wet. But I know that this, this guy here, he uses um, Redline... Um, oil and it's made specifically for he's an RC plane guy he uses the same stuff and uh, it's made for high revving extreme heat air-cooled engines and I want you to look and see this thing's got a ton of hours there's the front of it blowing oil and everything let's see if I can get this thing up here I want you to see the piston and the cylinder this guy let's get it to focus this thing for as long as it's been used is almost absolutely perfect let me take the, the light off see if that helps look how nice that looks it's a double ring piston it's a, it has excellent compression this thing it always runs can see and I think he runs them at 40 to 1 yep a little bit of extra oil blowing around here but the inside of it the heart it's just perfect like this thing can just keep on going keep on going until the rings wear down but even then it would it wouldn't be a total overhaul all you got to do is buy a new set of rings if we put a new set of rings in there and maybe a quick hone probably wouldn't even have to do that so then this thing will just go crazy again so Quality oil makes a huge difference. Just wanted to share that with you. Um, oh. Okay, so same guy, different machine. This one looks like it's a HS Hotel Sierra 8-1 Romeo. It's a big, long hedge trimmer. But the same deal here. I'm just going through and giving these this thing the, in, the inspection. Let me get the light on it. Let me get the focus on it. Hold on. Same scenario. That red line, red max oil that he uses is just keeping these machines looking really, really good. Doesn't that look nice? So. And then if you're wondering, um, like I said, it runs about a 40 to 1 mix. Here's the plug. Oh, you look, it just, I don't know if that was just put in. It doesn't look like it, but that's absolutely perfect. Got a little bit of carbon on the bottom part of the plug. But that's a, that's a nice machine. It's in for a sharpening, so I'm going to come through here and sharpen them all up but there's like five machines to do today I just you know what like I might inspect one more just to check but generally like if one thing's going wrong with one with the same owner then it's gonna go wrong with the rest of them that's what I've found so yeah that thing sure looks good in there quality oil and high test gasoline makes a huge difference and then not doing uh just revving the crap out of your motors when you first start them up it's going to give you a lot longer life on your equipment guys okay we'll check another one here in a little bit oh guys okay guys so here we are we're on the, the third machine this is another hotel sierra 81 romeo there's the one that we just did from before yeah, we're just going through giving them a wellness checkup. And let's put some light on the subject. 
Same thing. It's looking good. Looks real good in there. Doesn't it? Red line is what he uses. I use the the caster 927, which is basically the same thing. So while I got them apart, what I'll do, here's the plug. Let's see if we can get a better focus on that. Come on, baby. You can still see that the center electrode is still nice. Little bit of what do you call it? Little bit of carbon, nothing. Just absolutely nothing serious. So this thing's going good. Running real nice. So when I get these things this far this far down, that you know I took the exhaust off, which is what you would do like if you were buying used equipment. Um, check the plug. Um, run it. Not gonna mess with it with the carburetor or anything. If it's running good, don't break what's not broken. And I always just go back through and I set the air gap. It's just something. It doesn't take very long, and it just ensures. Because like once I hand this back. You're going to say, okay, that's commercial. So, like, 30 days, if you have any problems, then bring her back. So, yeah. So far, all three machines are looking great on the inside. Some ring wear, but that's normal without scoring. I mean, that's their job. That's the sacrificial part in order to give you good compression is just the ring. So, Nice. This one, it's in for a sharpening too, so. Okay, we'll keep going. Okay, you guys, here we go. More of the same. I already set the air gap on that. You don't need to see that. Plug is fine. Here is this cylinder. Let's see if I can get that up. Focus, baby. Focus, baby. There you go. Still looking beautiful. Isn't that nice? So yeah. So now there's whatever, these have all been gone through. Um, remember these Husqvarna ones, the one with the, the bad handle? I can feel it going bad in another one here. So maybe it just needs a little bit of grease to try to make it last as long as it does. That inside safety handle is like $13.50. But I forgot where I got it. But anyway, so these are all pretty much ready to go uh, under the knife to get sharpened. And this one right here, I'm just gonna put it back together. Put that with put that with the hoard over there, and then just start do some sharpening. And then I also have all these chains to do. Ta-da! Okay, guys, I'll be back. Oh, and after I shut off the camera, I wanted to show you something. This is the muffler on this one, and you look up inside of there, there's an awful lot of carbon built up. You see that right there? So I got a funny feeling that that um, spark arrestor is going to need to be burned off or cleaned up. So we're going to check that here in a second. I need to take and put it back on and then remove it from the bottom. I'll show you how I do that because they can't hold the muffler and then and wrench this off it's a 5 8 fitting on there the on the bolt so we're going to take that off and check it out okay okay so when the muffler is in place there's the little guide tube that comes out the front for the exhaust it pushes it out front see it right here right there there's the tube goes up there and then where the spark arrestor is, that goes in there. So anyways, um, I just used the impact, zipped it off at the 5 8 And they've already taken the, the screen off. So, so I scraped out all the carbon and stuff on the inside of there. And we'll put it back together. And it's time for sharpening. Okay, guys. Okay, guys, this is the last part in this the the hedgers and stuff but um i'm gonna take and undo the handle this is kind of like a listening exercise if you saw the first video on the husqvarna um how the safety switch works um hear that click 
there's no resistance I can feel it it's pretty good pulling straight up you can hear that that switch activating and then on the side over here I can feel a little resistance this one here this is obviously it's a second unit straight pull no problem on the left side you can really hear it and then over here that just snapped in there's a lot I can it's like it waits to the last second and then it just it, it kind of lets go I can still hear the switch activating but so it kind of makes me think that I'm gonna put some grease in here I'll show you here in a second I'm gonna put some grease in here and make sure that they're gonna be copacetic I think I have some silicone grease I'm gonna put in there and hopefully it won't attract any dust or dirt but it's it's absolutely destined to fail if I if I if I don't do anything it just waits till the last second and then let's go so that means it's straining that the the handle down there I'll show you again in a second and then you'll know what I'm talking about okay guys so for some of you that may not have seen the the last video this is this over here I can't even really see that's the configuration this is this the switch how can I do this there's a switch down there there's that triangle link right here and then there's the little knob that comes down from the the handle so i'll show you how it i'm upside down doggone it show you how, exactly how it works right there it's focus so when it pulls up hear it activates that switch it's struggling watch how it side loads it's pushing the link against the side here before it wants to slide up and then it just kind of gives all at once see how that side loads that piece I'm going to do it over here on this side too it doesn't even want to go so anyways I have some it's actually like plumber's grease it's 90% pure silicone waterproof whatever so I'm going to take I'm going to put a little bit of that Hold on. We got my. I just got a Q-tip, and I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna grease right in here, and then on that side, and hopefully that's gonna make that a lot easier. So we'll check it out here in a second after I get the grease in. So I put some a little bit of grease on the inside of this. See if we can get this to focus, because this is important. You can see the grease sticking out there but on this is the way that it goes in this side over here is the side that's rubbing on the the black inside you can see like there's a little bit of dirt but what you can't really see I'm trying to get as close as I can it actually has score marks in it from like dirt or whatever being in there that slows it down that puts resistance on it and so now it, the the handle, that little that little peg right there has has to overcome the resistance. That's what strains it and breaks that link right there. Um, I tried to write a letter to the uh, or an email to Husqvarna, and my mail got kicked back because I had a link to the video. And then I also went to there where they're promoting this it's a 536 uh lima india hotel deca delta 60 x-ray it's the lithium ones but that's just a design flaw you guys i don't maybe if this piece was rounded or i don't know i i don't i don't know it's a clever design but i mean it's destined to fail over time maybe that's what they plan on so I'm going to put it back in and then let's just see if it made it any easier. Okay, well, it's definitely easier. You can watch it as it activates. When you hear the click, that means it's working. Doggone it. Click. 
click, click, click. I'm missing the spring over on this side, but yeah, it seems to be a little bit better when it's pushing against the side. The switch is falling out of its spot. Okay, that's about it, you guys. This is a long enough video for you. Hopefully this thing isn't upside down. All right, I'm done. I'm out. I'll check with you later.